I have to take myself back to my purpose to motivate and inspire and encourage you guys. There are days where I don't feel like getting out of bed and putting on a cute outfit and sitting down and recording a video, but then I remember if it could change one person's life, it makes it worth it. All right, you guys, I do not know why I didn't think of this sooner, but I just made a homemade veganized orange Julius. So yes, throwback to being a 90s kid. If you were a huge fan of Orange Julius, this should be your new go-to shake. The shake is perfect to get your dose of vitamin C as cold and flu season is right around the corner. It's also great for hydration and it's the perfect pre-workout because it has plenty of healthy carbs and protein. So for this homemade Orange Julius that serves one, about one and a half, all you need is two whole oranges. Who would have thought? Why juice the oranges, especially if you have a high-speed blender? So two whole oranges, one frozen banana, about 15 large ice cubes, half a cup of plant-based milk, we used organic soy milk, one capful of Sun Warrior Liquid Light, and one scoop of Sun Warrior Vanilla Warrior Blend. You guys know we have been huge lovers and supporters of Sun Warrior for almost a decade now. Their protein powders are USDA organic, and raw, they taste amazing. They amp up our workouts, keep us fueled on the go. Another favorite that I added to this smoothie mix is their Liquid Light, which is fantastic for mineral hydration. Highly recommend checking out Sun Warrior Protein and Supplements. You can use Eat Move Rest for 20% off every single purchase. So be sure to check it out, linked below in the description. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It tastes like one of those push-up pops from the Swans Man, Schwans Man. <laughs> The push up pops. Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back, or if it's your first time to our channel, then welcome. While typically we are in the kitchen or you'll see us as a family of four sharing what we eat in a day, there is so much beyond the plate that goes into finding success in your daily habits. A lot of you, I'm sure, are on this channel looking for solutions to health ailments, or maybe you're just wanting to lose some weight, get into better shape, maybe just for entertainment, because we do, like I said, share some family vlogs. But for today's sole purpose, I want to talk to you guys about your sole purpose. I have answered how I stayed disciplined in a previous video, I can link that below, but today's take is on motivation. How do we, or since I'm here by myself, I'm going to share what I do to personally stay motivated even when I don't feel like doing something. My first answer is I don't stay motivated. For me personally, today I am not feeling super excited about what I'm doing in this life, to be quite frank with you. I'm not feeling super thrilled about the big projects that we have to tackle yet today and throughout the rest of this month. When I'm lacking motivation, it simply boils down to action. So if we're feeling anxious, action is always the antidote to anxiety. You have to be proactive, especially when you have a sole purpose or a mission in life driving you. Honestly, it's not like a cut and dry black and white answer that we necessarily come to overnight. In fact, a lot of times it evolves as we grow older and wiser. What fuels us and drives us changes a little bit. There's a lot of different things that can really open you up. I've always been someone that's just like to do a little bit of everything. I've been a dabbler my whole life. If I get on Pinterest and I find a craft that looks really cool, I'll go out to Michael's that same day and I'll get everything I need. I got certified to scuba dive and then I dove the Great Barrier Reef. I'm very grateful for that experience. I love to play tennis. I dabbled in yoga for several years. And for me, it was when Dusty and I actually thanks to my mom, um, ended up going to a series of healthy lifestyle coaching certification conferences across the country. A few of them were here in Florida, actually where we now live. We did these coaching conferences and all of a sudden I just felt so connected to my purpose and it really makes sense to me coming from a family of doctors and other healthcare workers. 
it really makes sense to me because I feel like I have that in my blood, but I knew that med school wasn't my true calling when I was in college, even though I went pre-med, knew it wasn't quite right. And that evoked a lot of anxiety within me. Once I started forming connections and increasing my knowledge base in regards to not just nutrition, but all things living a healthy, balanced lifestyle, I began to feel like I was awakened within, truly, because I had gone through so many sleepless nights between college and career where I just had no idea what I was doing. I was floundering. Thankfully, I, I was able to work at my parents' practice. My dad's a physician and my mom is a business manager, so I did a little bit of using my biology degree by helping my dad downstairs while upstairs I would help my mom with some of the bookkeeping and management. And while I was very blessed and privileged to have, have that opportunity, my heart just wasn't in it. So if you're feeling like your heart isn't in the work that you're doing, it might be time to evolve because it's really difficult to find motivation to begin with if you're not even remotely interested or excited about what you're doing. So for me, I just found myself kind of twiddling my thumbs and killing a lot of time. I eventually decided, okay, so if I'm on the clock and I'm done with my work, then I should be pursuing something in the health and wellness realm. I should be doing something productive. So I started creating my own web domain. I knew that eat, move, rest was a thing even back then. So Dusty and I both kind of built out our websites, purchased the domain name, and just continued living our lives, sharing more purposefully on social media. And that continued to give me a reason to wake up in the morning. And it made me more cognizant of what I was doing every step of the day, every step of the way, because I felt like, okay, I, there's a chance I might share this. And I know a lot of us can fall into the trap of living for social media. And what I mean by that is you do something just because you know that you're gonna post about it and get a reaction that you want, which gives you that dopamine hit. But at the same time, it was actually a really healthy practice for me because I was, like I said, paying close attention to everything I was doing throughout the day. And I was really refining a lot of that. So we made our daily morning routine videos that have evolved over the years and healthy green smoothie recipe that has evolved over the years. All of our recipes um, have been very intentional. So of course we're doing these things to nourish ourselves from the inside out and to have this like mind, body, soul connection, but also because I knew that part of my purpose was to inspire others. So another part of motivation is inspiration. And inspiration honestly kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes because it's kind of a fluffy word that's pretty and sounds nice and we all wanna be inspired. I can go to the symphony orchestra and be very moved and inspired and be like, man, I wish I had a talent like that. I wish I knew how to play an instrument at that level or going to a ballet and wishing that I could move my body as gracefully as some of these athletes and artists can. A lot of things can inspire us, but truly, am I going to become a prima ballerina overnight? Or am I really going to invest time in uh, honing my flute playing skills, which I did play flute in middle school, first chair. <laughs> no, inspiration can evoke warm, fuzzy feelings, but the inspiration that truly matters is the inspiration that turns into action. 1% inspiration, 99% action. If I'm stumped and I'm just not feeling it, I will honestly get on, like I said, Pinterest or maybe on Instagram, but I'm not scrolling mindlessly. I'm searching with intention to find whatever it is in me that moves me, that really captivates me, and to take some of that and put it into my own work. Because honestly, all new forms of art, all creations stem from inspiration. Even God himself was inspired to create us. Find what it is that captivates you, that you know you have your unique perspective on, that you can share with your own unique audience in your own unique way. A lot of people say, well, what about God, you know? like. Isn't God the one that actually is doing things for us? While we can pray and pray and pray, if we don't get off the couch, God isn't going to give us these opportunities. What's more important is to realize that yes, God gave me gifts, but it's my job to actually implement them. It's my job to go out and invest. You can think of it like 
God giving you a big sack of money. There's even a Bible story about this and there's one man who hoards it and hides it and does nothing with it. The guy who invests it, God gives him more and more and more because he's taking those gifts or those talents and he's putting them to good use. So I feel like that has really helped me with my lackluster days where I don't have the motivation, but I know I have the message within me and I know I have something to share with you guys. I have to take myself back to my purpose. This is my purpose. It's to motivate and inspire and encourage you guys. And there are days where I don't feel like getting out of bed and putting on a cute outfit and sitting down and recording a video, but then I remember if it could change one person's life, it makes it worth it. So, you know, when it comes down to the brass tacks of, okay, how do I stay motivated to eat healthy foods or to eat completely vegan, whole food plant-based like the Stanzix do, even their kids do, or how do I move my body regularly and daily, but not just that, how do I develop muscle tone and exercise with intensity and with intention and how do I not just you know get eight hours of sleep every night even that would be nice for many people but how do I do that with intention you know how do I sleep really well and how do I get rest in other areas like spirituality and time with loved ones downtime it really comes down to being really clear about your goals when you have a clear-cut goal then you're better equipped to reverse engineer that goal into tiny baby steps that will take you to your end result. Just remember, forward is your pace. We don't wanna be backstepping, you don't wanna be stagnant, but don't worry about how fast you actually get there. Forward is your pace to focus on. Maybe for eat, you have this goal of becoming vegan by the end of the year. Let's say by month three, you've eliminated all animal products. So maybe by month two, you've eliminated two animal products. Maybe by month one, you've just eliminated one. So you can see we're working backwards here. And I always say pick the lowest hanging fruit first. So let's say you're just not not crazy about meat to begin with. Maybe it's the cheese and the eggs or the dairy and the eggs that really you have a harder time with. So I would recommend maybe cutting the meat for one week and see how you feel, but also find replacements. You have to find something to add in its place. So whether that's a veggie burger instead of your beef patty or some tofu as your protein instead of chicken breast. Other option would be to just focus on one meal a day. Breakfast being so easy, make a healthy smoothie, make some fruit, get some oatmeal going, things like that. If your fitness goal is, I really wanna run a 5K by next spring, find that race, sign up, or mark that date on your calendar and work your way backwards. Something that you can do today is possibly dust off your tennis shoes and simply go outside and go for a walk. Just make it a simple five, 10 minute walk. Maybe you walk jog every other day of the week. So you're doing it about three or four times a week and you just move up from there until you're able to run for longer times, longer distances. As far as rest goes, something that I struggle with is wanting to always wake up earlier than I do and it's really difficult because I also like to stay up late and it's like you can't have both. If you wanna get adequate rest, you have to choose. For me personally, I would like to get up earlier. So not just earlier, we need something concrete for our goal. I'd really love to get up at 6 a.m. every single day and meditate and read scripture. So the first thing you can do is get on your phone because our phones have so many helpful apps and you can set your bedtime reminder alert. Let's say I'm used to going to bed at midnight. If I'm trying to go to bed at 9.30 or 10, I don't think it's very sustainable to make that two, two and a half hour switch overnight. Instead, just focus on going to bed 15 minutes earlier every single day or every couple days. Just decide for yourself what pace you wanna move at. Find that goal, make it concrete, and reverse engineer in the increments that you find most attainable. And I think it's important also that we don't make these too easy, but we also don't make these unattainable. Our soul most definitely knows when we're cutting corners. You want to feel those senses of accomplishment because this is going to increase your levels of motivation. My favorite Peloton instructor, I've been a huge fangirl since Robin Arzon was on 
ritual podcast, I think back in 2014, that was a long time ago, before I even had ever ridden a Peloton ride before. I just was so moved by the eloquence with which she spoke. She asked herself these three questions that totally changed her life. Number one, what's your why, which we talked about in the beginning, because if you think about the word motivation, motive, what's your motive? You wanna be healthier and more balanced and take care of yourself for your kids because when they come home from school, you wanna be fully present and be fun and not have your mind in 20 different places thinking about the things you didn't do to take care of yourself that day. That's a great why. So really dig deep on those. And number two, why not me? So I know a lot of us can get on social media and instead of finding inspiration, we find intimidation, we find jealousy, we find fear. A lot of us just feel smaller or less than, like man, it would be so nice if I had this like that person. A lot of that comes from a place of, well, I know I could be doing more, but I'm not. Rather than looking at it from a, I wish I was them or I wish God would have given me that lot in life, it's like, no. God gave you tools, he gave you the power, so all you have to do is harness it. There's plenty of pie to go around. Just remember, if they can do it, I can do it too. Why not me? Third and finally, what decision would you make if you were twice as strong and twice as powerful? So I especially like to remind myself of this when I'm exercising, when I'm riding on Peloton and I'm doing an interval or a Tabata ride and think, oh, I'm gonna save this little bit of energy for the next interval. Instead, it's like, no, what if I was twice as strong and twice as powerful? And the same holds true, you know, on social media. I know there's a lot of trolls and a lot of haters out there. What you need to really remind yourself in these kinds of situations is that nobody more successful than you is ever going to knock you down. So if somebody's trying to bring you down, it's somebody that's beneath you. And this isn't really like a ranking system, but it's more so just to be cognizant of the fact that Michael Jordan isn't going to bash you for playing basketball and working on your free throws. These people that are more successful are going to most likely be the ones that are gonna motivate and encourage you more. So. Don't let the haters bring you down. And honestly, remember, most of us are more powerful and are more strong than we give ourselves credit for. We only use a small percentage of our brains. There is so much unleashed potential within there if we just figure out how to access that. So we can become our own self-generating places of power if we just continue to remind ourselves that even when I don't feel motivated, I still have something in there to give. And that's all God wants from us. Our work is never done. It's just like brushing your teeth. So when it comes to eating healthy, moving regularly, getting adequate rest, it's literally just like brushing your teeth. Not only do we have to do it every day, we do it twice a day. We don't think about it because we just know that's what we have to do. The same holds true for doing these healthy things to take care of ourselves, take care of the one body we've been given in this one life to ultimately, hopefully, to glorify God. There's a Tony Robbins quote that lays it out really simply in very few words. And I just had to look at my notes because I forgot it. When you must, you do. When you tell yourself, I must, you have no choice but to do. And honestly, that's what motivation is to me. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling motivated. Therefore, I'm not going to exercise today. No, that is not how it works within my brain whatsoever. I simply tell myself that I must, so I do. When you start developing healthier habits, patterns, rituals, flow to your day, consistency, then the motivation goes completely out the window. What really matters is the consistency. So you continue bringing your body, bringing your body, bringing your body until your mind begins to follow. When a train is at a standstill on its tracks, it takes so much force to get it from that standstill to a place of momentum. You really have to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and really just lace up and be a warrior. So. When you must, you do. Tell yourself tonight when you go to bed, I must. And ask yourself, why not me? And tomorrow morning when you get up, 
see what happens. Start these routines, forget about the motivation. I don't always have motivation. Like I said, I didn't feel like doing this, but I feel like I'm in my flow. I've lost this sense of space and time. And I really hope and pray that this message spoke to even just one of you. Like I said, it would totally mean the world to me. So be sure to leave some comments below. Let me know what resonated most with you. What do you feel like you're gonna do tomorrow when you get out of bed? What are you gonna do differently? How are you gonna tackle the day with a different perspective? Wake up early, eat whole foods, go out in nature, get morning sun, drink more water, read more books, take cold showers every once in a while, remove toxic people from your life, prioritize your mental health, find a workout routine that you love, and perform random acts of kindness. Stop.